Clearly, Australia should be powering more of its domestic stationary energy requirement by natural gas, which is about half uh, as carbon intensive as coal. Government should resolve to see this happen on the East Coast and to seek out the policies and measures which will allow it to occur in a cost-effective way. At the moment, development of the resource is hindered, infrastructure is lacking, and there's insufficient competition in the market. We need change which is ambitious. If I was in conducting the current review of the RET, as I said, a piece of legislation which I introduced but which has now expanded enormously, the question I would be asking is not so much what should the level be, the target be, but does it sufficiently encourage technological breakthroughs? What we need is the next generation of renewable energy and the current incentives don't encourage much risk. Now that we don't have to protect the car Australian car manufacturing industry, I hope we will significantly tighten motor vehicle emission standards. In terms of our contribution to offshore abatement, and whilst I'm not an enthusiast about the next international agreement, I do think some of the tools that have been developed through the international process can help. Uh, and an obvious example is RED plus, reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. By Australia providing the tools to monitor, verify and report changes in forest carbon, we are contributing to an opportunity to incentivise better forest management and in fact reforestation in Southeast Asia. And of course rainforests are a major carbon sink with many co-benefits. <clears throat> 